In this video, we will look at linear system applications with a substitution method focus. So we'll start with a better deal scenario, which we have seen when we did linear system application with graphing. But this time, we're going to do it in a substitution way so that it is more algebraic. And as a result, maybe a little faster, a little more efficient, and a little more accurate potentially. So a yearbook committee must choose a printing company to publish their yearbooks. The first company charges an initial setup fee of $8,000 plus $4 per copy. So right there, hopefully we are already thinking, okay, initial setup fee, that's a y-intercept, the $4 per copy, that's your rate, so that's your slope. The second company charges an initial setup fee of $8,400 plus $3 per copy. Write an equation for each company to represent the cost to have yearbooks printed. So if we remember for these better deals scenarios, we're always going to have C for cost and then whatever the per is for. So this is per copy. So we're, the other variable will be the number of copies. So let's C represent total cost and let N represent number of copies. So for the first company, our equation will be cost equals. So remember, this is going to be in y equals mx plus b form for all the better deal scenarios. So our slope is 4 because it's $4 per copy. So 4n, and then we add on the initial value or the y-intercept. For the second company, it's $3 per copy and then the initial fee is a little more. Now we have our two equations, and in the past we would set up a table of values and start filling it in, not really knowing when to stop or how much to go up by unless I gave you a hint about it. So in this scenario, we don't have to worry about that, we can just solve using substitution. Now both of our equations have C isolated for, which means if C is equal to 4n plus 8,000, I can just replace or substitute that into the C in the second equation because they are equal to each other, they're equivalent. So when I do that substitution, I'm gonna have 4n plus 8,000 when I did the swap, and then that's equal the rest of the equation, 3n plus 8,400. And now we just have one linear equation with variables on both sides. So I'm going to bring the 3n to the left and the 8,000 to the right, making sure I change the signs of anything I move over the equal sign. So 4 subtract 3 is 1n, and 8,400 subtract 8,000 is 400. So here it is, and if we don't know what this means, like n equals 400, we go back to our let statements. We had let n represent the number of copies, so n equals 400 copies. Now we can take this and sub it into either equation. I'm just gonna go into the first one. C equals four times 400 plus 8,000. So four times 400 is 1,600. And then when I add on that initial 8,000 setup fee, we get 9,600, and if we forget what this represents, C represented the total cost, so here it is. Okay, so therefore, for 400 copies, both companies charge $9,600. Now, this is a better deal scenario, so I do need to get a little bit of a visual to see under which conditions each company is the most economical choice or the cheaper choice. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little sketch, I'm gonna put it right here so that I can see my equations while I'm working. Now I know I'm gonna have the number of copies on the x-axis and the cost on the y-axis. Now I don't need to graph this very accurately but I do know two points on each line. So for the first company, the y-intercept is 8,000, the initial value. So roughly I'll say here's 8,000, and I will plot that point. 
but I also know that the point of intersection is on this line because it's common to both. So I'm going to say 400 copies is here, and let's say 9,600 is here, which means my first company goes through that point, and there's the first line. Very rough, but it works. For the second company, its y-intercept is a little higher, 8,400, but it also goes through the point of intersection. So here's my second company. It's not a very accurate graph, but it's more about the visual. Now when I look at this, I can definitely see that if this is where my point of intersection, when I am less than the 400 copies, I want to choose company one because the blue line is the cheaper cost. But when I'm more than 400 copies, I want to choose company two. So I use substitution for the point of intersection, and then I do this really rough sketch to figure out the conditions. So for less than 400 copies, choose company one. For more than 400 copies, choose company two. And there it is. And I think this is faster and just more convenient than having to guess how much to go up by and trying to do the graph accurately and all of that. All right, let's go to some other styles of application questions. And the first one we have here is about numbers. So the sum of two numbers is nine. Three times one of the numbers is 15 more than the other number. Find the number. Now that can seem a little overwhelming. We do need to start with let statements and my suggestion is always go to the last statement or the last question. It says, find the numbers. Whatever you're being asked to find, that's usually what your let statement will be. So we're trying to find the numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna say, let x represent first number and let y represent second number. If we're trying to find two numbers, x and y, or whatever letters you want to use, those would be your let statements. Now you should have two sentences in your scenario. Each sentence will give you an equation. So let's read the first sentence. The sum of two numbers is nine. Sum. Sum means addition. So if I add my two numbers, I'm going to get 9. My two numbers are x and y. So if I add x and y, x plus y, I get 9. There's the first equation. The second sentence, 3 times one of the numbers is 15 more than the other number. Now that's quite an overwhelming sentence. Let's pick out what the operations are. 3 times. So that's multiplication. If I multiply one of the numbers by three, I'm going to get is. Is is an equal sign. 15 more. More means you're adding on 15. Okay, so let's try that out. Three times one of the numbers. So let's say three times x. Okay, so three x, three times x is equals 15 more than the other number. The other number is y, so I want to add on 15 to y. So 3 times one number, 3x, is equals 15 more than the other number, y plus 15, or 15 plus y. It, doesn't, it would mean the same thing. But here we are. Now we have our system. Now we can solve. Now if we're doing substitution, we want to isolate a variable Please remember 3x is not the same as having an isolated variable because the 3 is still there. I don't want to divide out the 3 because it's going to turn into fractions and we don't want that. So you do have a few options here. Uh, you can either isolate for the y in the second equation by bringing the 15 over or you can isolate for one of those variables. The choice is yours. I'm just going to isolate from the top equation and I'm going to isolate for let's say y. So I'll bring the x over, y equals 9 subtract x. Now I can take this 9 minus x, which is equal to y, and replace y with that variable. 
and I know I'm replacing y because my equation is y equals. So 3x equals, and then instead of y, I'm going to write what y is equal to, so 9 minus x, and then plus 15. Now it's just a linear equation. I have variables on both sides, so I'm going to bring the negative x to the left, and we'll turn it positive. Everything else stays as is, and now I can just simplify both sides. So 3x plus x, that's 4x's in total. 9 plus 15 is 24, and then I can divide both sides by 4, and that will give me x equals 6. Now, if you've done all this work and then you're like, well, I don't know what this means, just go back to your let statement. Let x represent the first number. So 6 is our first number. Now I'm going to plug this into my top equation, the x plus y equals 9. So 6 plus y equals 9. I can bring the 6 over. I change its sign and y equals 3. And y was the second number. Now that I have that point of intersection, I have my solution. I do have to remember because this is a word problem, I have to put a therefore statement. So therefore, the two numbers are six and three. So always go back to that final statement, said find the numbers, and then that's your therefore statement. Okay, let's go to another example, and this one's gonna be money related. When you did some winter shopping, you spent $128 on one pair of jeans and three shirts. When you did your spring shopping, you spent $192 on two pairs of jeans and two shirts. How much does one pair of jeans and one shirt cost? So remember, let's reread that question to see what we're looking for. How much does one pair of jeans cost? How much does one shirt cost? And those are the let statements. Let, let's say J, represent cost of jeans, J for jeans, let S represent cost of shirt. And you of course can use whatever variables make you happy. All right, now let's reread our sentences to see if we can get an equation out of it. When you did some winter shopping, you spent $128 on one pair of jeans and three shirts. Okay, so one pair of jeans. And one pair of jeans costs J dollars, so J. Three shirts, one shirt costs S dollars. So if I multiply the cost by the number of shirts, I'll get the total cost of shirts. So three times S. You can also think of it in terms of numbers. Let's say I'm making this up. Let's say one shirt, one shirt was $10. If I buy three shirts, that would be three times 10, $30 in total. But we don't actually know the cost of the shirt. so. If one shirt costs S dollars, three times S would be the total cost there. And if I add the total cost of the jeans and the total cost of the shirt, I'll get that 128. Okay, let's try again. When you did your spring shopping, you spent $192 on two pairs of jeans and two shirts. So two pairs of jeans would be 2J. Two jeans times the cost of jeans plus Two shirts, so two S's, gives you 192. And now we do our substitution. Now, the only variable I can isolate for nicely is the J because that's the only one with a coefficient of one. So I'm gonna bring the three S over and I get J equals 128 subtract three S. Now, how about you pause here and finish this question off. So actually do the substitution and then come back to check your work. All right, so this is what j is equal to. Here's the j in the second equation, so that's what we're gonna swap. Two times 128 subtract three s plus two s equals 192. We do have brackets, so we're gonna have to do some distribution here. Two times 128 is 256. 2 times negative 3s is negative 6s, and then we can write the rest out. Let's bring the 256 to the other side. It becomes negative 
and now we can clean up both sides. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4s's. 192 subtract 256 is negative 64. And then, like always, divide out that coefficient, and we get s equals 16. So that means it's going to be a $16 shirt. Okay, now I'm going to plug this into my top equation just because it's quicker. So j plus three shirts, so three times 16 is 128. We can do that multiplication, so three times 16 is 48. And then we can bring the 48 to the other side. And it will turn into subtraction, and 128 subtract 48 is 80. So J for jeans, so $80 jeans and $16 shirts. So therefore, jeans cost $80 and shirts cost $16. Alright, so the actual substitution part is nothing new. It is just the setup part. So let's try two more examples. We're not going to fully solve them. We're just going to set them up to practice that skill and see different types of word problems. So strawberries cost $4 per pound and pineapple costs $3 per pound. If you buy a five pound platter for $70, how many pounds of each fruit do you have? The question, how many pounds of each fruit do you have? So how many pounds of strawberries and how many pounds of pineapple? And there are your let statements. So let S represent pounds of strawberries and let P represent pounds of pineapple. And notice I am being descri descriptive. I'm not just saying let S represent strawberries. The letter S does not represent a strawberry. It's representing the number of pounds. So I am being descriptive there. All right, now let's reread this. Strawberries cost $4 per pound and pineapples cost $3 per pound. Well, that's not really giving me an equation because I don't have full information here, so I'm going to keep reading. If you buy a five pound platter, five pounds in total, so I have S pounds of strawberries, P pounds of pineapple, and in total, if I add up those two values, I should get five pounds. So there's my first equation. S pounds of strawberries plus P pounds of pineapples gives me 15 pounds because that's what you're buying. Now, I do have information of cost here. It's $14 in total, and one pound of strawberries is $4, one pound of pineapple is $3. So I have S pounds of strawberries. Each pound is $4. So four times S is gonna give me the cost of strawberries. Just like in previous examples, I had J jeans for the cost, and I bought, let's say, two pairs, so I did two J or whatever it was. Same thing here, $4 for strawberries for a pound, and I have S pounds. And then I have P pounds of pineapple. Each one costs $3, so 3P, and in total, you're spending $17. So I have one equation here about total pounds, and I have one equation about total cost. All right, let's try another one. Max is four years older than his brother. The sum of their ages is 20. Determine the ages of the two brothers. The ages of the two brothers. There's your let statement. Let M represent Max's age. Let B represent brother's age. Okay, so Max is four years older than his brother. Remember, is is an equal sign. So max, M, is, equals four years older than his brother. So his brother plus four will give you max because max is four years older. So if his brother was 10 years old, max would be 14, 10 plus four. So you can always think about real number scenarios and then bring the variable in. And then for the next one, the sum of their ages is 20. Remembering that sum means addition. If I take Max and his brother and I add their ages, we get 20. Okay, so 
those are just some setup scenarios. You can obviously go ahead and fully solve them to figure out the answers here, but I just wanted to show you some more setups to practice that skill. Okay, so remember, read that final question or statement to get your let statements. Whatever you're looking for, those are your let statements. And then find your two sentences that can give you the two equations in your system before you go on to the typical substitution method.